Hello again and welcome back to Active Retro. My name is James and this is episode 5 of Secondhand Finds. You're currently watching the long version of episode 5, so if you don't have 20 minutes to kill, I'd recommend clicking on the short version link that's on the screen now. Besides the length of the video, the only other real difference is that I go into detail just a little bit more about the things that I found in the long version. So if you have, again, the time to kill, you can continue watching this version or check out the short version in the playlist. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Last weekend, Mrs. Active Retro and I went to a local community sale that we've never been to before. I was pretty excited to go to some new houses, see some different faces, see some different things, first of all, and I crossed my fingers that I did not find baby clothes, which luckily I didn't, as you can see from the things in front of me. I found a lot of really cool things, and I'm excited to go over them with you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start right off. Uh, I cleaned out a 10-cent bin. Uh, it was later in the morning. A uh, woman was very happy to get rid of things. Um, and so I just essentially just dug through the bin and found a bunch of really awesome, cool stuff. And that's where these guys came from, the uh, Scooby-Doo Mystery Ink figures. In fact, let's go ahead and uh, zoom in here a little bit so you can see these better. All right, so that's where these guys came from. Don't necessarily care for the style, but it was nice to get a full set. There's also these two little Minecraft figures over here. We have two figures from Toy Story 3. In the back here, we have Donatello from uh, the Michael Bay uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, we also have Thor from Superhero Squad. He's in his uh, cinematic universe kind of get up. In the back here, we have um, Fisher Price, Imaginex, uh, Black Ranger uh, from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Over here, we have a knockoff Donatello, movie star's Donatello, from uh, Playmates Movie Stars line, again, from around the 1992-1993 era. He is a modern bootleg. Um, he actually looks pretty good. He, he, he His plastic's good. The quality is good. Uh, but he is a knockoff all the same. The color's wrong. The texture the plastic is wrong. And he also has his uh, Playmates... Uh, stamp that used to be on the bottom of his foot. It's been filed off. You can almost make it out, but it's definitely uh, been uh, definitely tried to. Someone's definitely tried to get rid of it. Uh, we also have a polar bear. I got him because he's a polar bear. He was cool. Uh, he was in the bin. Threw him in the bag. Uh, we also have Crypto, the super dog that's off screen. You can't see him. Uh, there he is. There's Crypto. Uh, he was in the bin too. Um, so, of course, up front here we have Muscle, millions of unusual small creatures lurking everywhere. If you grew up in the 80s, you know Muscle, you loved Muscle. They were a line of hard plastic two-inch figures. They were produced by Mattel. They themselves were actually an import from the Kanikumon line that was made by Bandai in Japan. There's about 30 or so figures here, and i got to be honest with you guys, when I first saw them, I thought they were bootlegs. Um, just because of the Donatello in the background there, he kind of made me a little bit nervous. And the fact that, you know, they are so perfect. They, they actually are in excellent shape. And of all the muscle figures I've come across over the years, these have to be by far in the best shape, best condition. Um, and I, they just kind of threw me off, to be, be honest with you. Uh, there's no discoloration. There's no signs of play wear. Uh, there was one or two that had chewed off legs, but I'm guessing a pet did that. Uh, and they are in actually absolutely great shape. All the details, all the markings are sharp, clear. They're the appropriate size for, for muscle figures. Uh, and all the maker stamps on the back are sharp and crisp and clean. Uh, so I have verified that these are legitimate, including this guy right here. Uh, this is actually uh, the claw figure. It's one of the more sought after, more rare figures from the line, uh, especially to find them in lime green. Not as rare as some of the uh, other variants of the figure, like the purple version. But still a really cool figure to find in this day and age uh, in 2017 to find it in a 10 cent bin. So I was very happy about these muscle figures. Again, there's about 30 of these guys in total uh, and just something you just don't find nowadays. Moving on, we have a Sears electronic football game. Unfortunately, the contacts on this thing are shot. Uh, but for the asking price, I think it was like $2. I couldn't pass it up. I love old electronic games like this. It also came with the original instruction manual. Here, let me pan up for you so you can actually see it. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to give, try it and uh, hopefully breathe some new life into it. Uh, over here, we have a uh, Mario figure. I'll pan over. Uh, Mario figure, uh, 2009, not sure who made it, just a cool vinyl figure, uh, you know, again, a quarter bin or something like that. Uh, Stitch here, he came from a quarter bin, uh, I normally don't buy Funko Pops, but Stitch, I will make an exception for. Uh, just a disclaimer, I have an absolutely amazing Stitch impersonation, but I like you guys too much and I'm not going to make you endure that. Uh, and back here we have a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the White Rangers series, Goldar's Vice Versa VHS tape. 
I, you know, I my mentality is if I see a cool VHS tape for a quarter, I'm going to buy it. Uh, so, yeah, probably not what the seller was actually expecting to sell that day. Uh, moving back over here to the left real quick, let's uh, cover this guy, uh, Buckeye and Woody from Toy Story. I'm guessing Toy Story 3. Uh, not positive about that. It is made by Mattel, so that would make sense. Uh, cool figure. I think I paid $2 total. Um, no clue what it's worth. I really don't care. It's probably going to go on the shelf. Uh, you know, of course, I was a 90s kid, grew up with Toy Story. Uh, loved Woody and the fact that he has his hat that makes it so probably gonna put him on the shelf I actually recently picked up a really nice Buzz Lightyear figure. So that's gonna pair nicely with him um, In the back here Let's uh, zoom out Don't mind the stormtrooper photobombing in the background. We have a little foot here uh, This was a JC Penny exclusive plush toy made by the gun corporation uh, I guess in this was late 80s 1988 whenever the first movie uh, of 20 or so came out um this is actually not mine. Uh, this actually belongs to Mrs. Active Retro. Uh, she saw it first, and she called dibs. Uh, I think probably the only person who likes uh, the Land Before Time in our household more than me is her, uh, which makes sense because there's only two of us. So, hey, what can you do? Um, really neat stuffed toy. I normally don't buy plush toys. She normally doesn't buy plush toys, but it's it's Littlefoot. How can you not buy Littlefoot? Uh, speaking of plush toys, uh, again, going against my norm, I actually got a 1976 Fisher Price Kermit the Frog. Um, he's seen better days. Uh, he's a little bit musty. He needs cleaned up. He needs his eyeballs fixed. He's got some paint wear right here. Uh, but for 50 cents, I figured I'd try and, and try and fix him up. Uh, again, he's probably uh, going to go on the shelf when all said and done. He looks really nice. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here in this big gallon bag. There's just a ton of different figures and parts in here. We'll just spread everything out here. Uh, so first we have a couple figures from Disney's Aladdin. These were made by Applause in 1992. They're just hard PVC fig uh, figures. Uh, Aladdin does have some wheels in the bottom that he can roll around. So it's like he's on the magic carpet. We have a 1990, uh, excuse me, 1988. Uh, Michelangelo from Playmates Ninja Turtles line. This is actually the soft head version of the figure. Uh, what's interesting to note is that uh, a lot of the different toy companies uh, in the 80s, uh, Mattel and the Playmates especially, whenever they first uh, did a first run of their figures, they would actually have them with a soft, uh, softer head. Uh, they wouldn't have the hard plastic heads like you would normally find. And that was an effort to reduce costs. Uh, whenever they were first creating a toy line, they were never sure if it was going to be successful. So to uh, reduce uh, the risk of, of, of loss as much as possible, uh, they used uh, less expensive materials. And that's how we have the uh, soft head figures. Uh, so you know that your uh, the figure that you have is from the original run or the first production run of a, of a, of a toy line if you have the uh, a soft head version of a figure. Uh, this Michelangelo is actually in very nice shape. Uh, simply because uh, his nunchucks are not broken here. I'll even let you zoom in here and take a look He's actually in very nice shape uh, very minimal paint wear nunchucks aren't broken or anything like that uh, He is missing a couple of his weapons, especially the ninja stars But the rest of them is in very nice condition especially nice that he's a soft-headed figure. However strange that sounds uh, Next here we have an ace duck uh, Yes, Ace Duck from the Ninja Turtles line as well. Uh, he does have his hat here uh, in one of the bags, uh, one of the piles here. Uh, he does have his wings, he does have his gun, but unfortunately uh, part of the wings uh, are broken off. So, uh, he, But overall though, he uh, the rest of the figure is in nice condition. Uh, here we have the uh, turtle cycle or sewer cycle from the original Playmates to, uh, Ninja Turtles line as well. Uh, it is complete. What's also nice to note, it has the original rubber band and that hasn't seemed to have dry rotted on that. So that's still connecting the bucket on there and that has not dry rotted. Uh, here's a seagull. I think it squeaks. Yes, it does. Uh, this is, uh, there's actually two figures here. These are both uh, from the Ninja Turtles line. They're uh, road-ready 
Shredder and Splinter. Splinter turns, of course, into the Party Wagon, and Shredder turns into the Mutant Module. Uh, these were essentially Transformers uh, featuring these characters. They're more or less shell formers. Uh, both of these figures were complete. Uh, they have all their weapons, all their instruction manuals. Uh, don't be surprised if you see these uh, in a full review, get a full review uh, later on down the line on this channel, uh, simply because they're really quirky, they're really unusual, and frankly, something I've never seen before. So uh, be on the lookout for those. Next we have a uh, checkpoint from uh from the uh, Hasbro's Cops line. Essentially, these were uh, more or less just six-inch G.I. Joe figures. Uh, they were no, in no way affiliated with G.I. Joe, uh, but they shared a very similar body structure to the three and three-fourth inch G.I. Joe figures uh, that you might be familiar with, um, including the, the uh, multiple, uh, multiple points of articulation throughout the limbs, and also the uh, O-ring waist. Uh, this actually has the original O-ring. It hasn't dry rotted with time. And this figure actually is 100% complete uh, with his helmet, uh, his shield here, uh, ch chest shield, and the nightstick. And he also does have his gun. Uh, this toy line was uh, notable for including the inclusion of uh, uh, caps with their uh, with their weapons. So what you could do is you could actually pull back on this piece here and it would uh, pop the cap uh, on that. So that's checkpoint from uh, the cops line. So the last uh, two figures we actually have here are from the Rambo line from the mid-1980s. Uh, you have Rambo and you have, uh, I believe, the villain Mad Dog. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, both figures are complete. Rambo's guns are down here below at a screen. But Rambo's an overall, actually both of these figures are in really nice shape um, and just in really good condition here. So Mad Dog... Uh, great figure. So uh, all in all, this bag is great stuff. There's a lot of neat things in here. Uh, just to give you some kind of context, um, the, where I got this uh, bag and this box from and one other piece, uh, the, the guy was actually going through his parents' garage and just getting rid of some of the stuff that he had as a kid. And uh, before you get all upset and you know, get all sad that he was getting rid of his childhood things, uh, these were actually the leftovers. Uh, a lot of the things that he had as a kid, he actually gave to his own kids. Uh, to play with. Uh, he said he had a very sizable Transformers collection, G.I. Joe collection, and uh, almost all of those figures actually went to his own children. So I think that's great. Uh, I think his children have absolutely great taste that they would still want to play with those figures. And uh, no, I was, I was happy to uh, have, a, have a chance at getting some of these other figures here. So um, they're actually very neat, very cool figures, and I'm, I'm happy to have them for myself. So um, let's go ahead and uh, clear this stuff out of here, and then we'll take a look at what's in the box. Okay, well guys, if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you know what's in this box. Uh, again, it was part of that same house, that same collection I got the other gallon bag from. Um, it's actually a box of mask toys. Um, that, of course, stands for Mobile Armor Strike Command, a uh, toy line made by Kenner in the mid-1980s. It was designed to combat both Hasbro's G.I. Joe and Transformers. It featured a bunch of smaller 2-inch scale figures with minimal articulation or removable helmets or masks, and uh, they could fit inside vehicles. The gimmick of the vehicles, of course, was that they could partially transform from one uh, kind of vehicle into another, or in this case, uh, the Ram here, uh, excuse me, the Rhino, or in this case, the Rhino here could actually uh, transform into from a regular semi-truck uh, into two different modes. One, he has a battering ram function. Uh, sorry, Sato. So that happens. Uh, and then this part here also actually opens up and becomes kind of a, a weapons platform or more of a uh, kind of a, a has a missile launcher. Oh, I just broke a piece off. Uh, no, it's not broken. Um, and it has a missile launcher, that kind of thing. This back part here actually also uh, comes out and uh, turns into a mobile station there. Uh, all the figures were there. Uh, I think, oh, there was one figure that was missing. Not a big deal, though, uh, just because I have one, a spare one with the mask. But all the masks were, were there for the figures that were there. And I think all of the f vehicles are actually complete except one. Uh, but they're all in really great shape. They can uh, maybe use a little... Uh, clean up or a little dust, a little polish, but by and large, they're actually in really nice shape. Uh, we have Wildcat, we have uh, Raven, we have the Slingshot, we have the Bullet, um, let's see here, we have the Vampire, we have Piranha, we have Iguana, we have a uh, Condor. And, of course, we have the Thunderhawk. I'm actually really excited about getting the Thunderhawk myself, to be perfectly honest with you. 
I've been after a Thunderhawk for a while now. Um, I, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, I, I did have two other Thunderhawks at one point in my collecting lifetime, and I, uh, I sold them off. Uh, you know, I just had no particular attachment to Mask. Uh, but now that I've gotten really big into, uh, you know, more collecting again, uh, I have room for these things. I, I want, I want to get a Thunderhawk uh, just because it is such an awesome vehicle design. Even if it is a little silly, um, but he, it's all there. Uh, it, you probably notice that it's missing this chrome piece on this door. I actually do have it in the box. Uh, just the tabbies broke it off to hold it into the door. Uh, this is actually the original version of Matt Tracker with the short mask. It doesn't have the long mask. Um, uh, looks like he is a... Oh, I just know. Sorry, excuse me. I just noticed that the rubber on this tire back here um, did uh, dry rot. So might have to try and fix that up. That's unfortunate, but oh, looks like somebody taped that. Oh well. Anyways, uh, I plan on keeping Thunderhawk. I've been after one for a while, so I was happy to have that. Actually, I would have bought the entire box just for Thunderhawk, um, or just bought Thunderhawk on itself, but luckily I was able to get the entire box. Um, like I said, they're all in really nice shape. I'm excited about Condor. I think everybody had a Condor at some point. Uh, this was actually the vehicle that was missing its driver, its pilot, but I, I have a bunch of those figures. Because uh, like I said, everybody had a Condor, uh, the motorcycle that could turn into the uh, helicopter plane thing. And then we have Prana, which is nice, uh, slingshot, and then we have the Raven here. So all in all, pretty cool collection of figures. There's a couple more drivers there. We also in the hat in that box, we also had a mace from... Uh, from a He-Man figure, and we also have a, uh, well, we also have a uh, G.I. Joe figure. He ain't got no legs. He ain't got no legs. Ten Dan, he ain't got no legs. All right, well, I think that's just about it for this edition of Secondhand Finds. Uh, wait, no, wait, excuse me, I forgot something. Also from that same seller, uh, well, he had this. <laughs> Sorry, I completely forgot about this because it would not fit on the table. Uh, that is the Super Soaker XP250. Uh, really cool, extra power 250. Uh, this is an original from Laramie. Uh, really cool Super Soaker design. Uh, yes, they do not make them like this anymore by any means. Uh, guys, if, you, if you're not familiar with the Super Soaker secondary market, I can tell you that, uh, yeah, this is actually a really cool piece to have. It's a very expensive piece to have. Um, I don't know what I'm doing with it yet. I, I don't really have any other vintage Super Soakers that I collect. Um, but I might make an exception for this piece just because it is so cool. Um, I mean, you can't beat original Super Soakers. The ones they make now just don't compare by any means. These ones had a lot of force, a lot of power to them. Um, so the fact that I found this right at the start of uh, summer, uh, you made this even better. So I, I'm excited to have found this, and it's actually a really cool piece. It definitely needs cleaned up, as you can tell here. It's got a lot of dirt, a lot of grime on it, a lot of love on it, uh, which sounds weird. Uh, but, uh, oh no, it's pretty good. I don't think that's a crack. No, that's not a crack. Sorry, guys. I, I just, first time I'm actually going to look at a lot of this stuff in detail. So I'm just noticing a couple different things. But no real discoloration on the plastic, which usually happens with these because they're usually left down in the sun. They bleach a lot and the stickers normally wear off. But this is not the case with this 250. Well, everyone, that's about it for this episode of Secondhand Finds, number five, the long version. If you haven't already, check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more secondhand photos. And of course, if you like this video, hit like. And if you like this channel, hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.